So, hi! My name is Maple Moon, and if you've never seen me on your screen before, I am an illustrator. Um, kind of VTuber, but not really. I, I stream when I feel like it. And I make comics, I make live 2D models, I made my own model that you see right here, and I'm currently working on an updated model with better physics, better angles, better everything, because I was still fairly new when I actually made this one. So I'm going to be making a new one. <laughs> that being said, today we are going to go over the Clipsita 2.0 um, heads, the 3D head models and the shading assistant tool. And so I'm just going to, as we watch what I do, I'm going to explain it a little bit, talk about it a little bit. And we'll continue on. So here I am just setting up my canvas. And I decided to do several different head angles for my two different characters. Um, the one who is a little bit more feminine is named Vanille. And the one who is a little bit more masculine is named Xavier. And they both use she, her, but Xavier also uses they, them. They are a vampire. And Vanille is a human, and they are the main characters of my comic, Vermilion Shift. So, here I am drawing them. I picked them because I know how to draw them by heart. I don't really need to look at a reference to draw them. Although, sometimes I do. But I've drawn them so much and so many times that I can basically just do it without thinking now. And that's why I picked those two, especially because they have kind of contrasting color schemes. Like, Xavier is very pale. They have the blonde hair, and Vanille is slightly less pale. And she has dark brown hair and green eyes. So, they're a good example to show the different kinds of shading that will be available. And that's why I picked them. So here I am just sketching them out. And what I'm doing here is I'm just using the... 3D models as a guide for thumbnailing, which is just very quickly going over them, getting the shapes down, and then getting rid of them. I don't like to use 3D models past this point, unless I'm like really frustrated with hands or something. So I only use it just to get the shapes down and make sure they're proportionate, and then I get rid of it. And I think that's how most people use the 3D models. I've never really met anybody who like actually goes through and keeps them for a long time through the whole thing. I'm sure there's some people that do, but I just don't. I, I don't want to overly rely on them. I think they're a little bit too much sometimes. So here I am just like very quickly refining the sketches. Now that I've got the very shapes down, I can add their hair and their various little things and I actually forgot that I had flipped the canvas here so I have to go in and fix the things left and right like Vanille has her hearing aid in the in the left ear and Xavier has that little mole on the right side of their face so I just had to go in and fix those and then I do the lining which is where I refine a little bit more fix the shapes fix the expressions a little bit more if I if I felt like I didn't really do the best that I could in the sketch I sometimes flip the eyes if the character is just looking straight, because why the hell not? There's there's no reason not to. Um, yeah, so that's basically what I'm doing now, and it's what I'm going to be doing for a little while. I feel like the head shapes, they helped me a little bit, but I have some critiques. For example, when you're working with the head shapes, and I will put like a little overlay here showing like some of the options for them. When you're going over the head shapes, you're kind of limited. You have a masculine shape, you have like a feminine shape, you have an anime shape, you have a chibi shape, you have the Crypt Keeper. And you can kind of mix and match and blend between them, much like with Design Doll. Um, but Design Doll has way more options, much less limited. And Design Doll actually has a fat face option, which is something that I wish that Clip Studio had because personally, I like to draw as many different body types as I can. They're fun, it's variety, 
uh, to the point where I will actually give people discounts if they give me something other than a basic skinny big boob waifu to draw sometimes when I'm working on commissions. And so that's what that's about. But I, I wish there were more options. I think there could be more options and there should be more options. You also can't like go in, you can adjust the nose, the mouth and everything like that, but it's very hard and I did try to try to make features that are more common among certain people of color, like lip shapes and nose shapes, and I did try to um, change the cheeks as much as I could. Um, very limited there, you're very limited. It's not something that I would really rely on overly much to design your characters, but you can definitely get like a basic shape down where you know what direction they're looking where the eyes are placed on the face and stuff like that. For that, I would say continue to study. Look at as many different photographs of people as you can. Because Especially if you're doing like a non-white character, you need to be able to draw those different features. If just for- because variety is the spice of life. So, yeah, there's- very much room to grow here. And I would like to see it grow because I think it is a very good feature that could save a lot of time working on comics. In comics you're drawing like a million little pictures as quickly as you possibly can. So if you can get the thumbnailing down really quick and don't have to think too hard about whether your perspective is correct you'll have a lot more use out of it and you'll have a lot better proportions in comics because comics especially they're a great way to get good very quickly but they're also not the greatest when it comes to preventing carpal tunnel and the less you have to think the better you can work work smarter not harder so and this is one of those things that I do do support AI. I think they can be very useful, especially as you'll see because the shading assistant is AI based and as you can see now I'm laying down the flat colors here. Xavier was albino before they became a vampire and now they just kind of dye their hair. It's very funny. Um, but yeah, as you, the shading assistant is AI based. Um, you can choose different colors to use. But it is very much rudimentary. It's not, it's not extremely refined. So what I did was I did several different angles, different sketches, and once I flat them, I'm going to shade them with the, uh, with the shading assistant tool. And I will use different presets. And then the last one I will shade using my usual method, although I'm only spending about 25 minutes on each of these heads in total. So it's not going to be like my best example of my shading, but it's just enough to sort of get my point across and show what I'm trying to show. I'm doing a little bit of refining here. Just getting their main features down so that people can recognize them. I took a little break here and then back to vanilla. If I'm jumping around a lot, I'm sorry. It's just easier to do one color at a time, basically. But once I lay down the flats really quick, I can easily start working with the shading and the colors and the lines and everything. If this weren't just for a study and this video, I probably would actually go in and do like more complex shading and you might see me do that later in a speed paint or something but we'll see we'll see what we can do so now I go in and just do a little bit of detailing and then her hearing aid and her pupils and there we go and I start with the basic shading here, and as you can see, you can basically choose what direction the shading is coming from, how hard it is, you can choose the blend mode for the layers, you can adjust the colors, and 
I found this sort of fascinating. Then I went into just adjust it and refine it just a little bit without doing too much extra shading on the bottom. Underneath, because I didn't want to, like, really take away from the AI feature too much. I really wanted it to be on display. So here I am doing the evening. And this took me a while to figure out which direction I wanted it to go. But I did eventually. And I think evening is actually my favorite preset. Because I love warm colors. So I might actually get quite a lot of use out of that. And then I just add some more extra colors to that. Give it a little more dimension. The evening preset was actually kind of difficult to do on Xavier because they're so pale. I, I actually struggle with drawing pale characters quite a bit. I, I honestly prefer drawing with like brown skin because it's pretty. You can do... You can basically use every color of the rainbow, but with pale skin you're kind of stuck with pink. <laughs> so here I am doing the basic shading on Xavier. No, this is just the default. I ended up removing quite a bit of that. And then I add the extra colors. There we go. And then here's the nighttime shading on Xavier. And then I add some highlights because I forgot. And for the last one, I just did like a basic rudimentary version of my own shading method. So I would use my brush because I like the texture that it has. And then I would you know, move around the lights and colors. Add a little shading on the skin. Smooth it out, and then I did vanilla. And yeah, that's basically, honestly, about all it is. Is it worth it? I think so. Especially if you get the upgrade, but if you don't already have Clip Studio Paint, I would say wait for it to go on sale. Or do the subscription if you really want it. But yeah. Other than that, that's about it. So, it's up to you whether you buy it or not. I would, I would recommend it. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of these features. For you, though, make your own decision. <laughs> Good night.